Hello everybody, welcome to another live stream with Anna Bruja Chaos um, from Raging Orgasm. I also do another blog called Living with a Toy Collector. Um, okay, so I'm getting a little better at this. I'm still figuring the kicks of the bugs, but that's okay. Um, I will warn you if I start slurring tonight. Uh, I was part of a rear-end collision earlier this week, and we had, unfortunately, uh, a friend of ours was killed. So I have a lot in my mind, and uh, I'm also medicated, so uh, that's for my back pain from being rear-ended. Uh, so, but if I seem to be slurring, just please let me know. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll do my best to correct myself or backtrack. Uh, this weekend, keeping it kind of simple, but before I start, I do want to mention a couple things. Uh, first thing is, my husband is having a giveaway in his group at uh, Raging Orgasm. Uh, just go ahead and like him on Facebook. And now we're giving a full Slug Zombie Series 3. So that's pretty cool. That's going on until the 8th of February. So that way it can be mailed uh, to you by Valentine's Day if you win. So it's pretty cool. So check it out. Facebook. So pretty cool. The other thing I do want to let you know is uh, I'll be doing another Chalk Festival uh, the following weekend, and it's a little bit further away. It's going to be out in Lakeland. So if you don't see me log on as early, I'm trying to do every Saturday, um, but I'll be doing this Chalk for Charity. It's out in Lakeland, uh, downtown Lakeland, and uh, it's from 11 to 5 p.m. It's pretty cool, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, yeah, so I, I just cannot wait. I'm, I, I just cannot say that anymore. I totally just... I'm totally psyched. Um, now, the other thing that I do want to say is this is the piece I'm going to be doing. Uh, they asked me to do a soldier piece. I have done one before. So this is compliments of the U.S. Army photo stream. If you check them out, they have a lot of cool stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I thought it was a beautiful piece. And I've done one before with uh, father and child from the Army. And it's my way to say thank you to the men and women that are overseas that constantly help us out. Whether you agree with me or not, that's your own biz. But I always admire the men and women who help us out on a daily basis and protect us on a daily basis. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to be doing a photo editing. Um, this is for a friend of mine, um, it's one of my clients, uh, his name is Mr. Mention, and this is 15 minus 9, uh, Mr. Mr. Mention is a reggae artist, and 15 minus 9, he does a mix of like reggae, and kind of like a hip hop -y type of music, so I figured, you know, these guys are awesome to me, they're great people, so I'm doing this kind of like a favor, but, uh, while I'm repairing this picture, I want to show you guys my progress, it might help you out even in your own paintings, because I'll be using mainly masking so let me go ahead and let me start Photoshop give it a second please I thought I had it open and I didn't <laughs> go figure Okay, so it's loading. It's still thinking about it. That's cool. All right, so let me go ahead and grab my picture and drop it off in Photoshop. Okay, so one of the first things that I usually tell people to do when you're doing any photographic um, images, first, check out your sizes. If you go to image, image size, um, I personally took these photographs through my camera. Our camera is a 14 megapixel camera. Uh, the main reason why I'm going with such an extreme high resolution, because some of these pictures are going to be used for promotional purposes. So if, if you're going to be using photographs that might appear on billboards, banners, uh, things that are like extremely high quality that has to look pristine, such as uh, like CD covers, uh, you name it. Always try to go with high resolution. As you can see right here, this is coming straight from my camera. It might be a 72 DPI, which is dots per inch or pixels per inch, but it is 44 and a half inches by 59 and a half inches. This is a huge picture, but it's great. The higher the quality, the better. The other thing that I normally recommend for people to do is instead of working on your original raw picture, let me see if I can find my folder with my original photos. Let me find this real quick. Let me go to my computer. Uh, business. 
Okay, so here's my folder, and this literally has, oops, my bad, sorry guys. Okay, and this has my photo process. As you can see right here, these are the pictures I did not select. Uh, this is just other things, me goofing around. This is my raw images. This is my most small images. I mainly use small images for email purposes, so that way it's kind of like thumbnails or uh, uh, proof the pictures of so you sending it, not just to your client, but maybe they have to have it approved by a producer or something. Uh, it's good to pretty much do small variations of it. These are easy to email. Uh, if you make them too big, it will not. It, it will take you forever to email anything. And then here's pretty much the last ones that I wanted to pretty much edit. And as you can see, I call them yes. And then instead of me having to sit there and edit these or screw these up, I simply copy them. And that's pretty much where all my files are with all the different renditions and variations of these images. Um, now, normally, uh, what I would say is use Bridge. Uh, in this case, I'm only doing one photo, but if you want, I'll go ahead and talk about Bridge a little bit later. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and start with some basics, okay? Now, one of the things I'm noticing right here is that my my subjects and my background, they're pretty much almost the same. Um, how do you say, uh, there's no severe contrast. They're pretty much all neutral the way through. So that's one of the things I gotta keep in mind. I gotta change that brightness and contrast on here. The other thing that I want to fix first and fourth, and fourth more, uh, first is removing my backpack from the background. Uh, I'm normally pretty good about removing assets from the background, but occasionally, you know, things happen and you cannot just, no matter what you do, it will end up in the background or you forget it and catch it at the time. Now, luckily, this is an easy fix. So what I'm going to do right here, if you are on CS5, 5.5, and 6, I should believe they even have these on 4. These are the photographer tools. You have red eye, which literally removes the red eye out of the photos. Uh, context awareness move tool. Uh, this was a fairly new one. I haven't had a chance to play with this too much, but it pretty much, if I remember correctly, it's like if you draw around it, it automatically patches it up for you. Actually, you know what? Let me just try that real quick. Okay. And it did nothing. Okay. So that means I need to learn how to use that tool a little bit better. That's okay. Then you had spot healing, healing brush tools, and patch tool. I love patch tool, especially if you, for example, let's say you take a photo and there's the time and the date and you don't want that on there. Like something, like you're looking at space or the sky and you got that ugly, here's the date, here's the time, here's that, and you don't want it on there. Uh, let me show you how this works. I literally turn on my patch tool at a shortcut J and I simply go right here and I draw around my subject and it's going to highlight and then I'm going to click and drag and as I'm clicking, I'm dragging, I'm going to try to make these as parallel as possible. So you're practically replacing that with other objects. And then when I let go, it tries to replace, as you can see, that's, that's not too bad. I mean, yeah, obviously we know that's there. For someone who doesn't know that that stuff's there, psh, whatever. And I pretty much like to do this a couple of times. I like to patch it with a couple of different areas, just kind of blend it in a little bit better. And it doesn't fully, how do you say, it doesn't fully replace, it's not like the rubber stamp tool. It kind of softens out the edge a little bit. There we go. But the main thing in this photo you have to keep track of is this little streak right here because this is part of the concrete in the background area. If all of a sudden I had this here, but then my stroke, my uh, tangent line is broken, right here, then it's going to really be an eyesore and, and like the end viewers will be able to tell immediately that there's something wrong with that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Always save. In this case, I'm going to do file save as. And I'm just going to save to my desktop and I'm going to make sure I start saving this as a PSD. And control shift S is for file save as, so now we're good to go. All right. So from here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start playing with my brightness and contrast. Now, normally, what people do, they used to go to image adjustments and then brightness and contrast and then go right here and then play with it. But the problem that this, that this brings is if you have, for example, let's say your art director goes, oh, or whatever, or your boss or whoever you're working for, whatever, they go, I like that 
but it doesn't quite work out. That means that you have to go back all those steps. And unless you program Photoshop to pretty much just go ahead and follow your steps all the way through, the problem you're running into is that now you've damaged your original image and you cannot go backwards. Now, if you go ahead and you use the layer, layer adjustments, you can make similar changes. And right here, layer, layer adjustments instead of image adjustments. Layer adjustments, you're not as, how do you say, committed to the changes that you that you are making. So in this case, what I want to do is drop down my 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 uh, hue, so that way I can check on my and check on my um, my uh, brightness and contrast. I'm going to do hue and saturation, and it's going to ask you what you want to call this, and I'm just going to call this test hue and sat. And like I said, please excuse my stumbling. I am medicated with. Uh, pain meds and muscle relaxers. So I'll do my best not to sound like I'm crazy. Okay, now right here what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the saturation all the way down. And what this seems kind of silly, and it might not be what you want, it's actually really good because as you can see right here, all of our tones are fairly consistent all the way through. I want them to pop out. I don't want them to get lost in the background, so I want to create more contrast. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a a layer adjustment and I'm going to do brightness and contrast. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this just bright one. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. Now, what this does is, right now it doesn't look like it did anything. However, if I double click on the little icon, I can now start increasing my brightness. I can also start increasing my contrast. And already this picture is already looking a little bit brighter. It's got more energy to it than it did before. This is before. This is after. So now you're starting to see more of the textures on their face, starting to see more brightness out of their hats. It doesn't look as dim as it did before, which is really nice. So you want to see a quick comparison. Look at that. I did not ruin my image. I can simply go like this, that's before, and that's after. So you already immediately starting to see some major changes of what you're doing on here on the image itself. Now let's say I want it to stand out more, but I want the background to be pushed back. So that way I don't want the background to be as saturated or as bright as them. I want to push this back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J to duplicate the layer. I'm going to turn this off right here. I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to create a mask. Now most people they do quick uh, Q for quick mask. If you ever hit Q and the layer turns uh, gray, that's what that is. You're in quick mask mode. That took me a while to learn. I couldn't figure out why it kept turning gray, and I kept going crazy when I started learning in Photoshop. And I figured out that's what it was. But the other thing that you could do is you can simply go back here to channels, turn this on, and what you got to keep in mind about channels in Photoshop is that when you paint in white is what stays. When you paint in black is what goes. All right. So let's go ahead and try to display this real quick. Okay. Now another quick way to turn on this channel, if you use the little key by your box brackets, I believe it's the forward slash, notice how that channel is turning on and off. So that's great. So if you're currently right here in your layers so and you want to quickly see what you're drawing, you can turn that on and you know when that quick channel or that that, uh, that mask is turned on because look what happens to my eyeball. This is off, this is on, this is off, this is on. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to start painting with black. It might be opposite, but I like to use, I like to be able to see what my mask is doing and in this case I'm just going to use a pencil. Make my all right. Now a couple of ways you can experiment is you can actually draw the outline all the way through. Or one of the things you could try to do is use what is called the quick uh, selection tool, the shortcut W. And I, oh, make sure you're in the right layer now. There we go. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's kind of iffy. See, as you can see, right there is giving me problems. And because this image is so large. All right, so I'm grabbing a good bulk already. All right, that's not too bad. And I'm adding to my selection little by little. All 
Where do I go? Try to pick around the arms. And again, you better have some strong processing power because when you're dealing with a picture that's like 60 inches, oh boy. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're just doing a quick selection just to save us a little bit of time. And as you can see right here, I'm doing my selection. Oh, and it's thinking about it. I really got to update the RAM on this portal thing. It's only uh, 6 DDR3. I'm trying to push it to about a 24. But I'm um, just waiting for, for me to save up a little bit more. All right, so I got that. That's not too shabby. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more down here. And notice how I'm adding carefully. I'm not just trying to go, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get it. No, because there's a lot of similar brown tones, and you want to make sure you only grab what you need, not grab extra like that. But that's okay. For right now, I can deal with it. So what I'm going to do with my mask selected right here, I'm going to go ahead and do Control Backspace. And what that does is it fills it up with black. All right, so notice how this right here, remember, because white keeps, black takes away. So in this case, this tone right here is from the original photo. This tone right here is from the new adjustment layer that we created. But that's perfectly fine. I can flip this back and forth. Now, while I have this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit that forward slash, and it, it shows me my quick mask as it is, which is the black. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to do some repairs. All right, I'm going to use my brush now, make that a little smaller. I pretty much should go ahead. I like to use the actual pencil tool instead of the brush. The brush is great for like softening certain things out, but for like quick blotches, I like to use the pencil because I can use the paint bucket and go jazam and just fill it in. For whatever reason, I have mini vanilla playing in my head. Girl, you know it's true. Ooh, 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 I love you. Do, 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 do. I know, I just, I just gave away my age, sorry. <laughs> I am an old fuggy. I'll say that today. Did I die? Oh, I'm so old. I'm not that old. I'm just in my 30s, but I feel like I'm old. I to deal with a lot of things. All right, let's see. So that's right there. And I'm going to swap. And the quick way to swap between your two colors here, if you hit X... So that allows you to quickly change between your two colors. There we go. So we do that. Make sure you try to get as close as you can, as tight as you can to those edges that you want to affect. So that takes care of that. Okay, there we go. Uh, the hairs get a little interesting. You might have to play with that a little bit. Right now, we're just trying to get the bulk of this mask on here. There we go. Make sure fingers are not missing. That's part of his shoulder. That right there is a gap. Let me go down here and switch my colors. We got pants, we got pants, and then right here we can start repairing as well. Whoops, wrong color. And there we go. And you can use the paint bucket if you want to. Sometimes it's like a hit or miss. I'm going to go right here. I got this. I got the toes. Let me go and let's do some repairs on here too. Okay, cool beans. And in some of these areas, all you got to do is literally just draw as best as you can around the outline. And again, normally I would take a lot longer doing these masks. I'm just trying to show you guys techniques more than anything. There we go. 
go, cool beans. There we go, so I have to get rid of that big bulk right there, and then let's do something similar over here. All right, cool beans, so let's check that everything that involving them is actually highlighted like a missing part of his butt. We cannot be having missing butts. Okay, cool beans. So always save as often as you can. All right, so right here what we're going to do, go ahead is we're going to go ahead and hit that forward slash. And right now we can see our mask. As you can see the background gets a little lighter. If we look at the contrast, that's actually not too bad. Now if we want to see which contrast works better, simply select the mask down here and hit Control i and that inverts to your mask. You see how now they stand out a lot more versus this? They are the focus of our picture. So I kind of like this better. I also like to see what it looks like in color. So one of the things that I might have to do is go ahead and bring back match the contrast, but bring back the brightness just a hair. And if I check it against that, that's not too bad. Do not want to go that, that they're, they're just radioactive. But you want to find a nice balance between that. Cool. All right, cool beans. So as you guys can see, I'm constantly checking back and forth with my contrast. I'm just making sure that my focus is what's being seen and it's not getting lost in this background. Nobody cares about the background. They're just kind of chilling at the beach. They're my main focus. Now, I'm going to save this real quick. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to keep like a black and white feel to everything except for where their flesh tones are, where their beanies are at, and then the little super duper fly, which is part of the new album coming out. So that's something that I kind of want to fix here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit control, click on the selection, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with black. So what that does is it literally, it goes into my um, let's see what I have this. This is in my gray scale and the only thing that stays in color is them because I masked them. So anything that's black is not being affected by the mask, but anything that is white is. Hence why the background is in black and white, but they are in color. Now I have to go in here and even refine this a little bit more, so play around with the clothing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the forward slash. And I'm going to start drawing lines over here. So like I know my arms, I want them to be in color. Oh, excuse me, I'm just so nasty, my bad. over here real quick. Just fixing that up. Just fixing that up. Oh, my bad. There we go. And do this down here as well. Fixing the feet. Fixing the feet. All right, cool beans. Through the arms. And again, you might have to go back into this a couple times just to get it right, just the way you want it. There we go. So the arm is one piece, the leg is another piece, these two pieces are another piece. But you see I'm kind of taking shortcuts and I'm thinking of the masses that are going to be affected by this mass. And I'm doing quick masking, and then I'll go back in and I'll do some repairs. But for right now, I'm just trying to get the bulk done. All 
Oh no, I hear Kitty in the background. Okay, and this right here is part of the logo for the new album. Don't think I have that out. I think it's in the table downstairs and I'm just too lazy to go out and get it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the paint bucket. Oops, I missed a spot up here somewhere. There we go. That's pretty much what I want. I just want to keep the head, uh, the arms, the feet, and then the logo right here. And same thing goes. Whoops. Same thing goes for this over here because he's got a little bit of of the logo showing. Control zero to zoom out. All right. So if I go ahead now and I hit my forward slash man I'm being so nasty you will see that right now that's the color now the, here's how you could tell there's color in here as you can see the shadow tones in this photograph because we are outside is picking up the lighting from the sky when you're doing color theory or you start learning about lighting the basic rule is if you're doing external lighting on average the lighting will give you a bluish tone and if you're doing more of an interior lighting it will give you a golden tone because of the color of the light bulbs or the fluorescence now the new the new fluorescent lights they are getting better and some of them are trying to give you like a grayish bluish tone now but if you're thinking of a regular household light bulb that's kind of like that weird like beige color to it most of the shadows you're going to see them it's going to be like a yellowish color but you can see right now that's before and that's after you can see the blue right there now because this might be used for promotional purposes I got to make sure that I get in here and I make sure that looks good so if I go here going to be flipping between my blacks and my whites. Oops. Okay, so much, it, well, for the most part it's not so bad. Now, if you ever want to soften your mask, okay, if you want to soften your mask, um, one of the things that you probably are not aware of is some of the newer stuff they added as of, I believe it's five 5, 5.5 5 and 6, it might be on 4. I mainly went from um, Flash, uh, not Flash, but the CS3. Got to briefly work on 4. I hated every moment of it because some of the heavy changes they make. And then to 5, and then I got skipped over to 6. I, I cannot do every version. That costs way too much money, bro. But one of the things you could do is actually soften up your mask. So that way it gives it a more natural look. So if I go here and I zoom in, you will see how nice and crispy these are. Now, if I double click on my mask itself, you're going to get into properties. It's going to give you this option. And one of them is density, which right now I want it to be 100. But then you can also feather the mask. And if I go here, you're already starting to see how much that's being feathered. Now, that's great and it's cute but it doesn't always work and you kind of lose a little bit of control but pretty much I personally why I think this effect is cool I personally love to just manually add the feather on there uh, because it's it's different structures here is fabric but here is flesh and bone so you can't be doing that everywhere um, one of the things that I am going to do right here I am going to <coughs> excuse me let me go ahead and turn that back on. I am going to go ahead and try to clean this up. So let me go ahead and add a little bit more black. Normally with sunglasses, if you're trying to do a black and white image, I usually like to add them to the low saturation because it is a reflected surface, so it's going to pick up some of those natural colors. Now right here, as for the beard, I'm going to switch my brush to a normal brush. And I'm going to switch this to white. So that way I am softening this right here and I'm going to drop my opacity down to 70. And this is something you're just going to have to fiddle with it. There are better ways to select this. Um, it's something I'm not going to cover tonight. Beard. And I'll show you a better way to select hair next time. Someone has to like really remind me of that. Uh, but for right now this will have to do. 
That's it. This is just a quickie, just to show you if you guys want to edit certain photos. This is awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. All right, so right now.